In this video, I'm going to calculate the Laplace transform of e to the at times f of t, where f of t is a function whose Laplace transform we might already know. And the reason for this is not so much that we will see a lot of problems where we're expected to see calculate the transform of e to the at times f of t, but it's going to come up often in the final result while solving ODEs, and we're going to need to recognize the transform of this so that when we invert it, we know how to go backwards through this. So this is going forwards, and ultimately you're going to be uh, going backwards through this same transform process. Okay, so let's just say, uh, give it a name. So the Laplace transform of, whoops, of f of t, just for notational convenience, we'll call that f of s. And what we're interested in here is calculating, the, so this is already known, we know what that is. And what we want now is to figure out what is the Laplace transform of e to the at times f of t. And I'm gonna write that down right from the definition of the transform. So that's integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st times e to the at times f of t dt. And now this is actually a lot simpler than you might have thought, or maybe it's exactly as simple as you thought if you saw this coming. So I could rewrite this as e to the minus s minus a times t, all multiplied by f of t. And you'll notice this whole part here and here is exactly the Fourier transform of f of t, and the only thing that's different is this is normally s, and we've replaced it by s minus a, which means that we can just write down that the transform of e to the at f of t is just f of s minus a. So how do we use that? Well, we're going to find, in a lot of cases, we're going to be seeing a result of our calculations from solving an ODE have some kind of a shift of a Fourier transform that we know. And what that means is that we just have to go backwards and um, m multiply the inverse of the one that we know by e to the at. So let me go through an example of what I'm talking about there. So let's say we end up, you know, through some ODE calculation, we end up with a uh, a transform that we want to invert. So we want L inverse, the Laplace inverse transform of, uh, let's say, uh, S over one plus S minus, uh, let's say, give it numbers here, S minus three squared. So this looks almost like the transform of the cosine function, except that there's this s minus 3 here. So if we could rearrange this so that it looked exactly like the shift of a cosine function, then we could easily use the fact that we calculated or the, the transform that we calculated above to figure out what the um, inverse transform is. So let's just try to cook up something that works. And this is going to be a trick that will be useful in general in this course in calculating inverse transforms. So in the numerator, what we really like is s minus 3, because if we had s minus 3 in the numerator, then we would have a perfect shift of the cosine transform. And so, um, well, we can't just subtract 3 from the numerator, but if we add 3 and subtract 3, then that doesn't change the numerator at all. It just looks like it. And then we can split it up into s minus 3 over 1 plus s minus 3 squared. And then add to that 3 times 1 plus s minus 3 squared. OK, so this expression here is exactly of the form transform of something that we know, but with s minus 3 plugged in. And that's exactly what we found here. This is the transform of f, little f, with s minus a plugged in. So that means that this guy, when we take the inverse transform of it, so the inverse transform of s minus 3 over 1 plus s minus 3 squared, 
that's going to be equal to e to the 3t times the cosine of t. Okay, so that's one piece. And then we have this one here, which is not quite in the right form yet. And so how do we put that into the right form? Well, first of all, we have 3 over 1 plus s minus 3 squared. So I can first of all rewrite that. I'd like to have that 3 out front, and then I need a coefficient in the numerator, 1 plus s minus 3 squared. Um, now, if there's no s in the numerator, that means there's a constant in the numerator, and that makes this a shifted version of sine of t transformed. And so this should look like 1 plus s squared with a 1 in the numerator, and then we just shifted s by 3. So that means that, oh, okay, that's perfect. We wanted a 1 there, and so that's exactly what we've got. We don't have to do any fraction cooking there. So now I could just write down the inverse transform of 3 over 1 plus s minus 3 squared, is going to be 3 multiplied by, by linearity, uh, e to the 3t times the sine of t. So now I can write the full assembled inverse transform, the inverse transform of s over 1 plus s minus 3 squared will be equal to e to the 3t cosine t plus 3e to the 3t sine t. And that is how we use this result over here, uh, which, which tells us how to invert the shift of a known Fourier transform, which is exactly what we had in two separate instances once we broke this up into a more easily inverted form.